Well, hi viewers. I am so excited because today, this is a special episode, which we're going to repeat as we go through the next year on my vlog, but this is a super special episode because what's happening today is the woman behind the scenes, my <laughs> reverse mentor, I've <laughs> mentioned her, but you haven't seen her in front of the camera yet, Lauren, is here with me, and we're going to talk about how she's mentoring me to improve my social media communication and brand. I've gotten so many emails, calls, direct messages, Facebook messages, Lauren, from people saying, I can't help but notice what you're doing. I'm so impressed with it. I want to do the same thing for me. And so I was hoping that today you could continue our mentoring. Sure. On, yeah, and we can do that. kind of tell a little bit about the journey that you and I have been on together to start. And then I've mm -hmm. got some questions for you to help me. You bet. Yeah, so um, this has been such an exciting process to be a, to kind of build a video log from the ground up, right? And with such an amazing woman, and to really, you know, I think the thing that for Janet and I is really the most exciting part is that we're reaching so many women like you every day. And and when you're making a difference in the lives of women, that's all that you can really hope for at the end of the so day. So true. That's what it's all about, right? So when it comes to communication, I think about it in the same way. It's all about what are you trying to achieve? So what's your end goal? What's your North Star? What are you trying to get to? And that's the great point. So uh, those of you who know me in the industry or are getting to know me, I had just started working with Lauren as my reverse mentor. And here were my two truths. So truth one, the uh, channel is rapidly retiring. So a lot of folks made a lot of money in the channel and they're ready to retire, pass their business on to a family member or sell it out. And these business owners were getting progressively younger and more active in social media. And I had a great brand in the physical world of keynote speeches and, uh, and big business meetings, but not so much in the next generation. And that was where Lauren and I started on our goal was we were communicating some of my other news around solutions and products and the promotion. And we got into this conversation about, well, how are you going to talk about that? And so that was the beginning of what I think is a pretty fantastic uh, yeah. relationship now. And I certainly am getting a lot out of it. So um, tell a little bit about the exercise that you put me through when we first started around that the purpose of my communications, because you came in here and you yeah. you talked to me and we kind of came up with some platforms. And sure. that made all the difference, because before then I was a little all over the place. Yeah, so really what you want to do is think through what are the core platforms that you want to engage in. And so you can't, you can't swallow the ocean, right? You have to think about what are the things that you're good at, that you're naturally uh, gravitating towards. So for Janet, Twitter was one where she felt really comfortable, like from the start. Um, but then we thought, okay, we need LinkedIn because that's where a lot of professional conversations are going on. And we also need to think about visualizing what she's talking about. So we thought about Instagram. Now there's tons of other channels out there. So if one of those three isn't your choice, that's fine. If it's Medium, if it's YouTube, you know, this is now a, a section of that, right? right? Um, you know, you can always enhance your platform strategy. But think about from the beginning, what platforms work for you? And so that's what we did first. And then we thought about what messages do you stand for? Right. So in the beginning, we had three different messages that we were thinking about. Very right. core narratives, right? In a communications rule, you think about what's the narrative? What's the storyline? And so we came up with three for Janet. And from there, we narrowed it down to one. Because the truth is, is that we, if we were going to measure direct impact, we wanted to say, what's one topic that we can really move the needle on? Right. And so the outcome is this and some of the other communications that you see on social media today, which is keeping women in technology, which is something that Janet's really passionate about. Oh, yeah. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, how does that tie back to sales? But the truth is, is that it's directly back to it. So Janet, maybe, maybe you talk a little oh, bit about that. So in the last 90 days, more than a dozen partners have come to me directly through social media platform. In fact, right before this vlog, I just got off with one of the most exciting new technology partners in the business who everybody's courting, but I got the call from because they've connected with me and they, they're, they're loving this story. Uh, and it's actually not a female-owned business. It's actually a, a male-owned business who is trying to attract more females, and so that started the dialogue and then continued into tech. But the second thing on top of that is that we had record high sales months the last three months, and much of that is being driven by the salespeople in the channel who are resonating with the Verizon brands in a different way. So we were seen as sometimes a little more complex to work with, a little more difficult to connect with. And when we had an opportunity, sometimes it wasn't easy to find the right person. And if you're a channel partner, you just need to know who to call. 
So hiding in the dark, uh, not a great way for people to find you. And so I have partners now day in and day out DMing me, sending me messages on LinkedIn, sending me, as you've seen, a couple cards, etc., with opportunities. And so our sales are up 42% year over year. I can't give all of that to my social media platform, no. but I can sure give some of it. And the final thing I would say is that we have gotten so much exposure I just came back from Cisco from being asked to speak at Cisco Live, not an opportunity I would have received before I started um, my communication platform. Uh, from Amanda Lakes conference, same thing. They had seen the conversation. And all of this is turning into new business for Verizon and for my channel. And that's really the key, I think, for our viewers as somebody's mentoring you, and hopefully it's around communication because how lucky am I, um, is you have to have an outcome. It can't just be that you want to build your brand so you can build your brand so that you have 5,000 followers. It, it has to be that you're building your brand in the right social media platforms that the people that you want to listen to and have listened to you, Lauren taught me this, actually listen. So that's been the journey we've been on right. is getting the right um, listeners. So um, I'll tell you the story because I think it's phenomenal. So uh, the day before yesterday, uh, I was uh, starting to talk about something that we're now doing as a result of this. We're going to do a millennial series. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you who watch Shark Tank, stay tuned for a big surprise because we have somebody from Shark Tank participating in it. Very excited. Um, but here's the thing. That happened because somebody in the industry who runs a, a small business journal was engaged in the conversation, asked to have a conversation about what we were talking about, and then said, I've got this great idea. And now more and more people are coming to us saying, well, I want to have this conversation. So it, it, it really has fundamentally shifted how I've looked yeah. at where I invest my time. So I have two questions for you today you that bet. I need help with. I think people don't understand the time commitment. Sure. So can we talk a little bit about what's good time, bad time? How do you balance the time? How much is too much? You know, what's your coaching for people right. looking for a business brand? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. It's something that I get a lot too is, is how do you, how do you manage all of these platforms? I mean, it really can be cumbersome if you, if you let it become that way. Right. So the truth is that really you want to post twice a day on a Twitter. You want right. to post once a day on a LinkedIn, um, one to two times a day on Instagram. But you can plan out your week. So one of the things that Janet said to me really early on that I remember is on Sunday afternoons, yep. the football game's on, she's mm -hmm. sitting on her couch, she's thinking about her next week ahead. And so that can be a really great time yep. to make a list. What are the things that you think you'd like to talk about for the week? Are there proactive things that you want to do? And you can do some of the pre-work yourself. That's right. You can go on to Hootsuite. You can do any of those things and just start to plan it out. Right. It's a really simple process. Um, and essentially, all it means is, you know, thinking about what your core narrative is going to be, what's your opinion on that specific mm -hmm. topic, and what's the medium that you want to use to deliver it. So, you know, my rule of thumb is this. If it's something that is strictly business and and no really no fluff, LinkedIn is probably the place where you're going to want to put that. Yeah. If it's something that maybe has a little bit more personality, has a little bit more um, fun, flavor, you could probably do that on Twitter. You could also do that on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, in, is evolving, and it's a fantastic platform. But that's really where you're going to want to put your Twitter right. content. And then Instagram is how you see the world. Um, I have somebody that reverse mentors me because it's an ongoing cycle, right? And he always says to me, Lauren, when you think about Instagram, you need to think about telling your story. So people see um, a Janet or a Sheryl Sandberg or a Marnie Walden, and you see these executives that may not be attainable to you at first, you know, in terms of your own career journey. But then if you think about the path that they took to get there, then it becomes a little bit more... Um, attainable, a little bit more palatable. And so Instagram is one of those great platforms where step-by-step step you can tell your journey right. and you can take people along with you. So when you put it in that context, it becomes a really user-friendly platform. So I think understanding the platform, understanding the use cases is critical. Then really do a deep dive and figure out what do you stand for? You can't just be a business robot. You have to have some personality. <laughs> like, I I don't follow people who only talk business. I don't either. I don't you either. You need to so have boring. something. You know, you yeah. need to be human. And, I mean, my three things are be simple, be human, and be genuine. 
If you can do those three things, you are set. I love that. So I love that, that I mean, that's great advice. What great, and you can see why I'm so lucky. So you know, from a time standpoint for our viewers, because ha I have been asked this, I do on Sunday, but. I just plan it out. I use TweetDeck for Twitter. Um, I can plan out everything in probably a half an hour. Yeah. And because I have a platform, it's so much easier. Yeah. It used to be that I was looking and searching for things and trying to come up with something creative. But kind of my three things that I learned and, and I hope that everybody can take away is, so one was Twitter's a great platform for me because there's some repetitive themes. Wednesday wisdom, Monday motivation, Tuesday thoughts, right? Yeah. So as long as you put that hashtag in it, you can pre-plan months in advance if Absolutely. you wanted to. If you have Absolutely. a platform, right? Yep. You could just have an ongoing platform. The second thing, I actually give credit to my, uh, my son, Sean, which is Meme Maker, which is an unbelievably fun little uh, iPad app. That you can take mm -hmm. any picture and turn into a meme. Yeah. And so as things strike me, I take pictures of them and then make memes of them. Mm -hmm. And so I do plan some playful moments yep. around those themes that are on Twitter. And then the third thing, and I, I, I may even be the most powerful thing, is those super connectors. Yes. So those people that, because you've listened to my earlier vlog, you've defined your purpose. And if you haven't, you have to go back and read and go and look at what your purpose is because mm -hmm. that helps you with your communication that are your super top 10 super connectors that can help you to achieve what you want to achieve in discussing things with your audience. So a lot of questions from people about how do you get people to connect with you? What are the things that people do to get a following and meaningful connections? Any yeah. tips for us? Yeah, so I think really it comes down to engagement. It's about having conversations with people. And so you want to look at what am I what am I excited about and then who are the people that are having really interesting conversations about those topics. You're going to want to follow them. Then you're going to want to engage with them in the comment section. Mm -hmm. If it's in LinkedIn, you send, you know, you write a note saying, this was really exciting. These are the reasons why I liked what you wrote. Um, you know, if it's on Twitter. Well, that's a good, you know, that's it, a good tip. It's all around, this is why I liked what you said. In Twitter, it's about, hey, this was, this was really cool, you know. Check out, you know, if it's a story about, I don't know, drones. Check out what Verizon is doing about drones, too. You know, it's, and so it's connecting the dots for people. And it's all about the engagement. And so I think that, you know, you pick, you really comb through the platforms and say, these are the people that I think are influential. These are the people I really respect, um, want to emulate, um, could see a business deal with. Um, or simply, I just think they're really cool and I'd like to be their friend. Right. Right? Yeah. And those are the things you think about. And then you engage with them. People are more likely to follow you to build up your user platform if you're engaging with them first. And so really think through that. Um, and if you get yourself to a point where you're having a really great dialogue, their followers will be most likely to follow you too. So that's the benefit of it. That's a, you know, that's a good point and something I still need to work on. I, um, I, I definitely um, want to build my followers because it's working so well for me. Your coaching and mentoring has really helped our Verizon Partner Program brand um, and also my brand to make sure that people feel they have someone they can connect with in Verizon when they're working that big deal or, or that big mm -hmm. opportunity. Right. But I do have to continue to look at dialoguing. It's so easy to hit like share, retweet, depending on your platform, right? Right. Hearts. You know, right. it's so easy um, to do that. But that's such vanilla feedback. And I think about it myself now that I have thousands of followers, the likes and the retweets on things, particularly as a lot of my stuff gets search engine optimized is because we're using various platforms that pay, you know, right. that the platforms do that when you've got a good size following. Um, I don't really notice that. I mean, I recently just had something that was retweeted 300 times. So that would be hard for me to engage with. But there was eight people that commented. And, those and eight every people? one of those people I engaged with, I talked with, um, mm -hmm. I played with yep. um, some of them because they were funny. And it, it did make a difference to me because I immediately wanted to follow them because yep. they actually engaged and commented as opposed to just the easiest thing in the world is to like to 10 like things something. and get back and off go. the platform. Yeah. Um, but it also really helped me to see who was it that was engaged in that dialogue and were they people within the kinds of connections I wanted. And some have been epic fails where you get, you know, the wrong kind of engagement. There is mute and block on all social media yes. platforms to use it. Um, and the second thing is that, you know, it, it really is almost like an instant feedback. Is this hot or isn't it hot? Right. Right. It's, you know... 
when you're doing a when when you're having a conversation with your boss, what do you want? You want feedback. Right. It's the same thing. When you're out with your girlfriends or your or your guy friends, whatever it is, and you do, you're telling a story, you want them to react, right? That's what communication is all about. It's human connection. And social media is no different. I love that. It's interaction. I love that. So I know we're probably close to our time. We are. But final couple tips from, and you'll get to see Lauren again because all, all our characters will keep coming back. I say characters because we are definitely characters. <laughs> uh, all of our um, uh, mentors, uh, sponsors, and mentees like myself will be coming back uh, again and again. So this won't be your only time to ask questions for Lauren. And by the way, you can do that. Uh, yes. We're going to post this on LinkedIn, so please feel free. But uh, I've got a final kind of speed round of questions for Lauren, so here we go. So one, should you engage in an argument on social media with somebody who has a controversial point of view that's versus yours you can state your point but no don't don't dig too deep in good good coaching i'll have a lot of people ask that um should you be careful about who you connect with yes you view your social media the same way you would view your friend group if you wouldn't sit down and have a cup of coffee with them you probably don't want them in your social media yeah quality over numbers and they do rank your positive and negative influence so if you end up with a bad group of people that just connected with you because maybe you paid them or you bought followers or something it doesn't Mm -hmm. give you anything for your brand so it's not about the numbers it's about the quality and then my final two so one if you were starting from scratch with me again what would be the first thing you would do? I would ask you what you're interested in. What makes you tick? That is going to determine everything you do on social media. I love that. And then our final question. Um, when you think about LinkedIn and you think about all the stuff that they're enhancing, and obviously big news that Microsoft is buying yes. them, uh, there's been a lot of puts and takes around LinkedIn. So I know you help us with that in our, your communications role. You know, what are one or two final tips for most of our business watchers or LinkedIn right. folks like myself? What are just a couple quick tips around the new LinkedIn, which has had some improvements yeah. that they should be looking at or thinking about? Yeah. Um, cutting through the clutter is essential on LinkedIn. Anytime you can use a photo or a video to help drive your point home, it's going to be critical because there's a lot on there. Um, and then... Being mindful about what you're saying and being an innovator is just so important. Yeah. Yeah. You know, taking a stand on something is a really powerful thing. It has been throughout our entire history in America. We take stands on things. Right. So think about that when you're creating and curating what you're going to say on LinkedIn. It's not about just throwing something up there every week. It's about having passion behind what you're saying. People will follow you and read it if you have passion. I love that. Great, great closing thing. Have passion and people will follow you. That's what brand's all about. So thanks for joining us. See you again soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye, guys.